evening everyone my name is Rocio um so today I'm going to be talking about <clears throat> women's big well, the women's struggle feminist struggles from Latin America to the U.S. to Iran so first I'm going to focus on victories and at the end I'm going to talk a little bit about more um, negative things going on including uh the situation in Ukraine so it's been a pretty good couple years in Latin America in terms of feminist grass movements. Um, abortion rights have been won in Latin America in multiple countries thanks to mass movements. The first major victory in the last couple years was in Argentina. At the end of 2020, uh, Argentina voted to legalize abortion then. And what led up to this was over a million women and allies marching in the streets to demand this change over, those protests happened over several years. Then more recently, uh, last year, Mexico Supreme Court, quite opposite to ours, ruled that banning abortion is unconstitutional last year in 2021. And in the last three years, eight Mexican states have legalized abortion. Um, even though it's unconstitutional, it's weird. They're still, you know, in the process of actually legalizing it. And the third major domino in recent years was uh, in Colombia in February this year, um, the Supreme Court there legalized abortion in the first 24 weeks of pregnancy. So that was a massive victory. You know, to see how far right our Supreme Court is versus others in other democracies. Um, another smaller victory in Latin America was in Ecuador <clears throat> this year also legalized abortion in cases of rape. Um, so that was a smaller victory. Now, mass movements led to this. These were all women protesting in these countries for a long time. And this all started really when Uruguay, a very small country next to Argentina, legalized abortion about 10 years ago. That was the first democracy, I think, that legalized abortion in Latin America. And that led, you know, the neighbors being like, we deserve rights too, let's make this happen. And they did. So, <clears throat> yeah. And inspired by this victory, um, it's been promising to see here in the U.S. this year um, the reproductive rights movement has adopted the green bandana which came from Latin America to signify you support abortion and abortion rights. Now <clears throat> we have seen our defeats obviously with the overturning of Roe vs. Wade in the U.S. this year but also we've seen a massive upright like a massive wave of um, activism and we've had some vi very promising victories this year um starting with conservative kansas which voted for trump two elections voted in august in an off election um to keep abortion legal in that state this november californians voted to enshrine reproductive rights in our state constitution as the voters in vermont now that's not super surprising but in michigan a swing state Voters passed Proposition 3, guaranteeing abortion rights in their state constitution. And they also elected, you know, statewide uh, governor and others who would, you know, keep reproductive rights intact. Um, this is really important in Michigan because it prevented an, an, an anti-abortion law from the 1930s from taking effect. Another important, two other important electoral things that happened in November were, <clears throat> unfortunately, abortion is illegal in Kentucky, but... Voters there defeated a, an anti-choice measure that would have said that Kentucky's constitution doesn't guarantee abortion rights, so they quite opened a window for themselves there. And in Montana, which is very, very conservative, there was an anti-choice measure that was not even explicitly about abortion. It was actually much worse in some ways. Uh, this measure would have, it was defeated, this measure would have forced doctors to give unnecessary medical care to babies who are born non-viable, that means they're, they're gonna die soon after they are born. And lovely legislators there thought, oh, it'd be great if we forced doctors to give unnecessary medical procedures to um, suffering babies. Um, but yeah, I just want to show the particularly cruel practice, which shows that the anti-choice anti -choice agenda extends far beyond just, you know, concern about abortion. One other thing I want to note was that in the one Senate flip that happened for this year in the U.S., Women put Democrat John Fetterman over the top in Pennsylvania. As I mentioned, it was the only seat that Democrats flipped in the Senate this year, putting them into a 51 seat majority. 
Now, 57% of women voted for Fetterman, which is 14 points more than the male vote for Fetterman. So it was 57 versus 43% of men voted for Fetterman. So I hope the class reductionists have a field day with that one. But um, exit polls showed that abortion was the top issue in Pennsylvania in this election. So I want to move on to um, talking a little bit about Iran. Um, Iran has seen three months of non-stop protests led by women, which are massively threatening the regime. They began after the murder of Masa Amini, a 22-year-old Kurdish Iranian woman, and she was beaten by the morality police for not wearing her hijab properly. The protests spread to every corner of Iran. Um, they began as protests against forced mailing, but they've grown to demand the overthrow of the regime much more. Remarkably, the protests have forced the Iranian regime to announce they will disband the morality police. Allegedly. I mean, Iran's police, they will continue to, like, oppress people and women. But they're talking about, you know, maybe re repealing the veiling law. But it's still a nonetheless a very significant concession. The protests continue as the protesters want an end to the terrible regime they live under. It's not just about the veil. One of the more colorful chants has been heard at these protests is, Our hijab will be the noose around your neck. And as for how extensive these protests are, Khomeini arrested his own niece for supporting these protests and sentenced her to three years in prison. At least 450 protesters have been killed and over 18,000 have been arrested. That just goes to show how massive these protests are. They're even arresting 1% of the protesters. This is enormous. Um, and sadly, they executed their first uh, protester that was involved in this, allegedly involved in some violence, but the first protester was executed. And the slogan of these protests is Women, Life, Freedom, and there's a couple of these billboards that say this around LA from the Iranian community. So that's very inspiring to see. If this happened in Iran, you should be very hopeful everywhere. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the shift to what's happening in Ukraine. It's gonna be, this is not going to be, obviously it's sad what's going on there, uh, but I thought it would be important to talk about. Um, I just wanted to note this aspect of the Ukrainian war, that it's an explicitly anti-feminist war. Um, it's explicitly, the invasion of Ukraine is explicitly anti-feminist, homophobic, and transphobic. In a speech celebrating the annexation of occupied Ukrainian territories, Putin ranted about gay parents, trans people, children being indoctrinated in elementary schools about trans rights. Um, the Russian invasion is an explicitly far-right project, I say it's fascist, although that word is complicated, that seeks to erase queer people. Um, just I wanted to put a quote of what something that Putin said in that speech, that this is just like this project is very much anti-feminist and anti-queer. When he was talking about, you know, ranting about the West, this and that, Putin said, now they have moved on entirely to a radical denial of moral norms, religion, and family. This is a complete denial of humanity. Sorry, I'm, there's like a pause between them, but there is a d complete denial of humanity, the overthrow of faith and traditional values. Indeed, the suppression of freedom itself has taken on the features of a religion, outright Satanism. So that's what Putin was saying in his speech about the Ukrainian invasion, how he was doing this to protect the family, how you know, trans people were literally Satanism. This is you saying that the West is oppressing everyone with, you know, all this feminist, queer business. So that's just something that's obviously important to talk about. That if any, there's still some, there's still a few like, unfortunately, sympathizers with, or apologists for what Russia's doing, Russia's imperialism. But I just want to know that it, you know. All wars are, most wars are patriarchal, but this is a very explicit, like, Putin is saying, we're doing this because to take down women and gay people. And Ukrainian feminists have said that the Russian occupation not only does it use, like, war, uh, rape as a weapon of war, that they see Russia trying to decriminalize domestic violence, which I think they did in Russia a couple years ago, sort of. So they're trying to do that in occupied Ukraine. 
So that's just what just to, I needed to be said explicitly. The Ukrainian invasion is explicitly aimed at restoring the patriarchy to its height. Now, in conclusion, while there are great setbacks going on, like the war in Ukraine, Assad continuing to hold Syria, Taliban's retaking Afghanistan and oppressing women, and the overturn of Roe versus Wade because of our far right Supreme Court. As I hope to show you today, this is happening at the same time as same time as significant progress like the legalization of abortion in Latin America, which has had amongst the most restriction restrictive abortion laws in the whole world. And like I mentioned, electoral victories or reproductive rights from Kansas, Kentucky, uh, show us that the fight for women's rights is everywhere, is on everywhere, and victories can be achieved even in places where the fight hasn't been looking great until now. And one last thing I want to know. Um, one about the recent Georgia runoff. One third of the ads supporting the pro-choice pastor, Senator Raphael Warnock, mentioned abortion. One third of the ads. And he won. In a, like, 50-50 swing state. So this is important to know. Um, and also his opponent was a horrific misogynist who tried to kill his ex-wife. Okay, so like, this is important to know that these little victories are happening. So if these victories are possible in these places like Kansas, Kentucky, and Georgia, um, then we should be hopeful that with enough organizing we can win everywhere. Thank you.